We are gonna get right into it with the very next display. As you can see, top camera, front camera, we have motion ratio. Motion ratio is often looked at as something very simple, but then when you really look into it, plot it, graph it, do whatever, it's actually very complicated. And I'm going to give you a very quick explanation of what this formula is and how it works. So to start, I have created a display tray that fits. You can see I have two of these here and they go together really nicely so that we can stack these. I should have grabbed an Ackerman one, honestly, because these will also stack on top of the Ackerman displays. This particular display, we have a shock, which looks like this. Something that I put a bunch of time into, and I know it doesn't really look like it, but basically it's got this little catch and it's easier to put in than it is to take out. I've taken the shock apart and you can see how I have these little catches, this little guide rail. Once you clip it in place, it's not coming out. And we've got that there. I also added something just before making this video and that was all of these little steps on the side that these arrows actually click into. Every 0.1 increment is a step on these pointers. So you can see how it has this satisfying can you hear that? But that is gonna be used to help us on the graphing side where we can make sure that our plotting is uh, accurate. So on here we have the suspension simulated. Um, I made the upper control arm slightly shorter just like it is in reality so that we have some camber gain under compression. Um, the wheel is actually gaining camber as it compresses like it would on a real car. Um, roll center and all of that is kind of simulated. I made the arms longer than they should have been just so we can exaggerate um, and also have more room for choosing the different holes. The other thing that I did was added this grid on the side. This is going to be our wheel rate relation to the suspension, where I have one inch of travel every time you use the, the shock, and uh, the wheel rate is what's gonna be variable depending on where the shock is on these positions. So the first thing I'm gonna be showing you is how this clips in, which is really simple and then what these green lines represent. So this shock is able to use any one of these four holes, which is represented by this green arc. Any one of these four holes will give you full extension of the spring, meaning it'll start at zero, at full droop of the suspension. So the wheel is touching the bottom of the tray. So in any one of these positions, the spring is fully extended. So this is gonna give us a nice accurate reading for plotting the uh, wheel on this side. So you can see here we've gone from zero compression all the way to one inch of compression and on the wheel we've gone from zero all the way to 1.8. That is where we are going to flip this over and punch in our numbers. Motion ratio equals shock travel divided by wheel travel. That is going to give us one divided by 1.8. That's what you're going to put in here. We'll get out our handy dandy calculator and we're not going to go to the scientific version we're just going to keep it simple one divided by 1.8 equals 0.55 continuing and then if we look at this formula here this is what's going to give us our wheel rate calculation so we know what our spring rate is let's say that it's 8k on this scenario and we're going to type in 8k times motion ratio squared so motion ratio squared, I'm just gonna clear this. Motion ratio was 0.5556. Squared is times by itself, so times by 0.5556 equals 0 0.308. So we're gonna times that by eight, which is 8K. That gives us a wheel rate of 2.469. That means that our effective spring rate at the wheel is 2.469 with an 8K spring in this configuration. Now, I haven't looked at this camera much, but that's what this is effectively showing us using this handy dandy office desk display. Now, how can you use this tool in reality? Well, we can show you how then you can plot your suspension and calculate your motion ratio on your car using this as your visual learning tool. This tool isn't going to solve any problems for you, but it is going to help you understand. And knowing something and understanding something are two very different things, and we are going to help you understand it so that you can apply it. 
Let's try and plot this position on our suspension. You can also really compare this suspension setup with a lot of setups on your actual car. If you have a BRZ, your suspension in the rear looks something like this. 350Z with a spring bucket, your suspension is going to behave something like this. And if you have a Corvette, your suspension is gonna behave something like this. And all of these have a varying degree of change throughout the travel of suspension. The one thing you're gonna notice most is that as we're compressing the suspension, the angle of the shock is actually rotating, which is changing the effective wheel rate as it's being compressed. So the, basically what that means is from zero to one on the wheel is going to be a different rate than from one to 1.8, effectively, they will be different. Let's try and plot one of these. So I obviously have increments of 0.1 all the way up to one inch. So I don't need to log that. It's gonna be on my one axis of the graph. Let's start plotting the other graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the first step. And on the first step, I am reading, now obviously this is gonna be entirely accurate, but I'm reading a reading of 0.2. If I go to the next click, just under 0.4, so let's go with 0.375. My next one is reading 0.45. Next one is reading just over 0 0.7, 0 0.75. My next one, 0 0.9, 1.1, 1.25, 1.4, 1.6, and 1.78, it's just below 1.8, 1.78 ish. You know, these numbers are just gonna be close. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna try and use technology. On the Y axis, I need to go from zero to one with increments of 0.1. And on the X axis, I need you to key in the following data. And then I'm just gonna paste it and hit enter, see what it does. This is much faster than doing it on Google Sheets or something, especially when you're just using your phone. But here is a graph of this exact motion ratio with the variable change. And you can see it's not a whole lot. Basically you would plot this and come up with an average amongst all the points. But so essentially you're able to graph your suspension using the exact same method shown here, but understand that when you key in these figures, this is what's going to relate to your car itself. And I could list literally 10 cars off the top of my head, IS300, Supra, BRZ, Corvette, that are going to need to have a wheel rate and a motion ratio calculation in order for you to actually understand how this works. Now, if you're still with me, I'm glad you are because we're gonna talk about some really key points to do with motion ratio that people don't realize. So if you're talking to your friend and you guys both drive E36s, one has true coilovers, meaning the coilover goes directly to the rear knuckle and that you do not have a divorce setup, which the other driver has, where you have a spring mounted on the upper control arm and you have a shock mounted to the wheel. Don't even talk to each other is basically what I'm about to say. Your setups are so different that you cannot correlate your spring rates or your setups with each other. If one of you makes two adjustments on your coilover, for example, the divorce setup has a shock that essentially has a motion ratio of almost one. It's probably around 0.98. And then it has a spring on the upper control arm that has a ratio of, it could be 0.5 or 0.6. It's fairly far inboard from the knuckle. These two things are gonna have way different control over each other than a true coilover that has the valving on the same shaft as the uh, spring is mounted. One click or two clicks on a divorce setup is going to do a lot more than one or two clicks on a true coilover in the rear. Another thing to think of, if you have different control arms, different angle kits, different suspension, even if you're running wheel spacers versus not, or the offsets of the wheel is different, all of these things matter when it comes to motion ratio. If you add a wheel spacer onto your wheel, you are effectively increasing the leverage that you have to compress that spring. Anytime I think of these, I always think of an exaggerated 
form of visualization. So instead of picturing one wheel spacer or one lower offset wheel, you could picture a foot of spacers and how much easier that would be for you to compress that wheel by hand if you were able to pull on that wheel. Now what's gonna happen in reality is that you're going to start seeing a bunch of deflection in other areas. Like the strut tower might start flexing and all of these things also play into factors controlling motion ratio. Another thing is anti-properties or anti-properties. Anti-dive, anti-squat. Both of these are going to also affect your motion ratio. And anything else that pertains to controlling the wheel rate affects your motion ratio. And that is why it seems simple enough with a simple formula, but it is way more complicated than that. Unsprung mass and all of these things factor into how much your spring and shock are able to control your wheel. That is what this display very simply defines the bare basics of how to do it. And it's kind of fun to play with. So I hope you guys enjoy messing around with this. This is gonna be available to purchase and we are gonna add it to our educational stack of interactive suspension displays. You guys can get your hands on this. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or want to say anything like I know a lot of you do, go ahead and do that in the comments. That's it for this video. The whole thing is also done fully freelanced with no form of writing. So it's always up for a, a debate if I said something wrong. Anyways, thank you guys. You can uh, confirm anything you need to by buying this. See you on the next one.